Hey, how's it going everybody? Uh, we're starting a new series. It's going to be another solar pump, uh, but this one's going to be different. This is going to be a Dankoff solar piston pump. Uh, I've never used one of these, so I'm excited that we're going to kind of, it's going to be working in conjunction with our sun-centric solar pond pump from the Recirc system, because basically, if you guys have watched some of our other videos in the past, which we'll link them uh, to this initial video, uh, we're, we're pumping off our lower pond and filling back up in the primary pond because there's a leak because of the fractured rock that's, that's a ways down in there. So it kind of just bubbles down through the rock and ends up down into the lower pond. Uh, the, the primary issue is I'm concerned. Uh, it's California. We just went through a drought. It was really bad. We were lucky that we got a lot of water a, a, a year ago. Not this winter, but last winter. And we were able to fill up a lot of our lakes. Uh, but this winter, we only really had one month of good water. So our precipitation level is super low. Uh, which in my area, I'm in a class 10 fire danger. Um, we don't have uh, a close fire department. It's really about 10 minutes away. It really relies on bombers. Um, so we try to keep the ponds as full as possible in case there is a fire, the helicopters can bucket out of the ponds. The best pond that I actually have that's the easiest accessibility, I think, is up the hill behind the house, uh, which is probably about, I think it's around 900 feet back up uh, past the house. 900 feet from this point right here, I should say. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna abandon uh, the mounted clay pigeon thrower for right now. I, I left this modular so that I could uh, eventually put maybe a barbecue here, a camp style, or whatever I wanted to put here um, with a three inch pipe and we use iron ridge fitting. But we're gonna pull this off, put an extension pole on it. We got a, a discontinued product that Outback was making, the Smart Harvest power system that has two solar panels, a side of pole mount, um, and a battery enclosure that Alpha provided. And we're gonna mount that to this position and then uh, Dan Koff has sent us a pump to play with, um, which we're gonna put down closer to the pond for temporary. We're gonna pump from the pond uh, through a pipe that we're gonna trench this weekend and connect it to a pipe that goes underground that will feed up by the dog kennel build that we're doing. And we're gonna pump as much water as we can out of this pond before it all soaks into the ground um, up into the upper pond to do a reserve. This has also been part of my five year plan that I really wanted to have achieved by now. Uh, because before, if you uh, go through any of our Facebook stuff, we used to have big gardens where we've lived before. It's something that I really am passionate about. But the biggest problem about out here is our well is only a quarter gallon a minute. We're having more and more problems with our well production. Now, that was another reason for the ponds is really to hope that the saturation uh, or that the ponds allow saturation to go into the ground to fill up the aquifer. Uh, I can't really, I'm not a scientist. I don't know if that's really true, but logic would say that the ponds drain so fast it has to be going down into the ground, which is hopefully helping our wells uh, replenish and giving us better groundwater. Because if you look at the United States, the depletion of groundwater is rapid. We do so much bottled water. I think a lot of uh, our area comes from Mount Shasta, from Mount Shasta spring water. They bottle it out of a, a natural spring out of the mountain, but the groundwater uh, is being destroyed. So hopefully these help our personal aquifer so that we can have water. So we're gonna start this build as a time lapse and show you guys what we're doing.
off grid kid and I uh, got this uh, side of pole mount done in about an hour and a half. Uh, it was a great little uh, ray. We've never done one of these before. Usually we do top of pole mounts or ground mounts. Um, these are ET modules. They're 255 watts. Um, so basically we've got about 510 together uh, series uh, between the two panels. So we're at about 74 volts open circuit going into the charge controller and all the batteries are wired up for 24 volts. The pump that we're getting from Dankoff is a solar piston pump and it's a 24 volt pump and I think it draws 8 amps. I have to double check that. Um, so between these two, I'm going to put it on I think a simple switch for a timer so that when the batteries get up to a certain voltage, uh, it opens up the contactors to the pump and it lets it build up a charge to the batteries so that way we can really extend our pumping time off that. It's, exper it's an experiment. Uh, I can't even say I might wind up bypassing it completely together and just run it off the two panels, but this is how we learn. Uh, the other thing that we got going on here is we ran this pole long. Uh, I ordered a couple of ubiquity point-to-point uh, -point receiver transceiver deals, and we're going to experiment with that for doing some uh, better internet later around our house, and we have a couple projects where we need to beam some internet to do some monitoring controls. So let me take you around the back here, and I'll show you what we got. So again, uh, this was a system uh, that was made by Outback Power. It was called the Smart Harvest. Um, it has been discontinued. They, they wanted me to kind of try to get it off here, but it's like put in the paint. So the only thing we could do is have a sticker made to block it out. Um, so don't get, your, don't get too excited about buying one of these. We picked up a few of them from Wholesale Solar as kind of a, a blowout deal. And we're going to use these as experimental projects and to do some beta testing for different things. Um, I really like these cases though. These cases we can get. These are made by Alpha, who is a parent company of Outback Power. Um, they're really handy because they got latched covers that can be locked. They open up super simple. And inside this system, uh, we basically have um, six batteries. Um, there is three, three parallel uh, sets of batteries and they're series in twos. Uh, the cases, uh, or the, the racks open up super easy, which the only bad thing about the way that these are, um, by not being a little bigger box, is you basically have some kind of wires that you're going to have to deal with. But it's really nice to keep everything super condensed, pull it out, make it easy to wire. Um, all of this was pre-wired from Outback. So the only thing that we really had to do was modify our pole, uh, put an extension on it, and mount everything to it. And we're going to drive a ground rod in, wire it to our pump. And basically we have a full little system ready to roll. These would be great for telecom, for uh, 12 or 24 volt uh, power sources to feed an RV. These are great little projects that people can order and do. So you, I think you can get kits similar to these from Wholesale Solar. Uh, it might be in a little different enclosure. Maybe a Magnum inverter could be added to this. Um, so you can get a, you know, a small inverter at 1,000 watts at 24 volts. So you can get a little AC with some backup. But we're going we're gonna to test this thing hard and see how much water we can suck out of this pond to pump up to the other one and then again use it as a telecom system so also be sure to give this video a thumbs up uh, comment any feedback or questions you guys have and make sure to subscribe for up and coming videos that we've got